subscribe our channel and press the bell icon for watching more video. In this chapter, we will talk about another kind of return. These returns are called return POs as opposed to a return delivery. So it's not a return delivery, but it's a return PO. So what's the difference between a return delivery and a return PO? Well, we know what's a return delivery, right? So this is a return delivery. And what's a return delivery? So we have a PO against which we receive goods and we also receive an invoice say for a quantity of 100 100 kilos of coffee and uh, we want to return some of the stuff like 50 kilos of coffee right so we create a goods issue it's not a goods receipt but it's a goods issue because we are issuing the goods out of our warehouse and we are doing a goods issue for say 50 quantity and then we'll also do an invoice and that is for a quantity of 50 that we receive from the vendor so this is a return delivery so this invoice receipt is also called a credit memo right so this is me21n this is my go, this is my row. Same here, my go, my row. You just select different options in my go and my row depending on the transaction that you're doing, right? So this is a return delivery. Now, we are gonna talk about return PO. To understand return PO, let's take an example. In our coffee shop, we sell newspapers right? Say we sell New York Times. How many do we sell? Maybe 50 a day, right? But we don't know how many we sell. So we typically get like 75 or 100 every day. And we sell however many we can, right? So how does this process work? There is a PO that gets you 100. 100 newspapers every day, right? And we receive 100 and we get an invoice for 100, right? And this happens, say, every day. This is not ideal. There are other ways to do it, but say this happens every day. So there's a PO for 100 every day, 100 quantity of New York Times. And we receive 100 newspapers every day into our goods. And we receive an invoice for 100 every day. Now, we might not sell all the 100, isn't it? We might sell 50. We might sell 75. We might sell 25. What happens to the remaining newspapers that we accumulate every day that we don't sell? Well, newspapers, magazines, bread, these kind of goods, they expire by the day, right? So bread expires in, say, two days. Newspaper expires in one day. By the time it's evening, nobody cares about your newspaper, right? So the industry works in a different way there. Newspapers are delivered to you, say, in 100 quantity. If you only sell 50, they take the remaining 50 back. They give you money for the remaining 50, right? So say, for example, on day one, say Monday, you buy 100 in a PO, but you only sell 50. So this is buy, this is sell, and remaining is 50, right? On day two, same quantity of 100, you sell 75, and remaining is 25. Day three, say 100, and you sell 100, remaining zero. Day four, 100, and you sell, say, 60, remaining 40. So, so you, get, you get the picture, right? So at the end of the week, say, we are cutting short the week by four days. 
at the end of the week you have 50 plus 25 75 plus 40 115 i think i'm not very sure but doesn't matter so at the end of the week there are 150 newspapers old newspapers that we have accumulated for the entire week available to be returned right now you don't want to go to the individual gr and start doing goods issues it's very cumbersome and you typically do it when there is defective goods or for some reason you want to return stuff but this is not just returns you don't want to even consider them a sale right so this type of situation is handled using a return po the po itself is not for delivery of goods into our warehouse but for returning the goods to the vendor but the original intention of this po or this po is not that we want 100 quantity we want 100 quantity of coffee we want 100 quantity of newspapers but this time what we are going to do is end of the week what we do is we create a return po okay so it's going to be like this think of this as return and then it's going to be a po it's a different kind of po we will talk about that and that's going to be for a quantity of 115 new york times newspaper at whatever price you're going to get it back and you do a goods issue of 115 and that goes out from our warehouse and then what do you do you do an invoice right and that's also for a quantity of 115 that goes out of our warehouse the difference between this po and this po is that at the line item level you mark that as a return po that's what triggers this new kind of process everything else remains the same you just mark that line item as return po and then subsequent processes automatically adjust themselves to be a goods issue for example as opposed to a goods receipt or a credit memo as opposed to an invoice receipt right so let's do this in action so first thing we're going to do is create this cycle and the second thing we're going to do is create this cycle right and in order to do that first we have to create the new york times material how are we going to create it as a trading goods how are we are trading it right it's not raw material for us it's not finished goods it could be finished goods but we don't care we could do it as a trading material it's easier that way so step number one create new york times as hava trading goods let's do that how do you create a material mm01 right so go to mm01 and type in new york times call it retail and use hava trading goods enter and we only want to create three views right basic data one purchasing and accounting and that's for the plant of chicago okay new new york times basic unit of measure each it's not hour or it's not uh, kilos it's each for material group just put in something for now purchasing group anything is fine and valuation class 3100 and it's moving average because it's trading goods sap has automatically picked up the price control as moving average because it knows that we're going to buy and sell which is more relevant for moving average as opposed to manufacturing which is more relevant for a standard cost okay all right save it enter so we got new york times there so this step is complete 
and the second step is create PO for a quantity of 100. Easy, right? So go to ME21N, select the same vendor, doesn't matter, any vendor is fine. And select New York times for a quantity of 100. Say the price is one dollar each, so hundred into one is hundred dollars. Save it. As usual, copy the PO. Now receive the goods against this PO. How many are we receiving? A quantity of hundred. Where are we receiving into? Uh, let's say zero zero one. Save it. Okay, material document is posted and we'll also create an inbound invoice. Today's date and the PO goes here. So it's for a quantity of 100 and the amount is 100. Save it. So we have created a PO, three data goods receipt, step number four did an invoice receipt. Okay, we're good. Say we have been doing this for like seven days a week, seven purchase orders and like I said, we have accumulated a quantity of 115 in our warehouse, right? Right now we don't have 115, so let's say we have accumulated 115. At the end of the week, we are going to do a return PO, return purchase order. Like I said, the way you create a purchase order is very simple. It's the same step, create PO for New York Times with the same vendor. So it could be like say 100, 115, whatever, right? Because we don't have a quantity of 115, I'm just using a quantity of 100. And I said the difference is marking that line item as a return PO. How do you do that? If you scroll all the way to the right, there is a column called returns items. Just check it and hit enter. So this item is being marked as a returns item. Now, one item could be returns, the next item could be a regular item, no problem. Now, save it. There we go, we have our new PO. Copy it. And then, we're going to do a goods issue. Right? Select that PO and you see, it's the movement type that's selected here is a GR returns, right? If it were a regular item, like a regular purchase order inbound, it would have selected a different movement type. Now, we don't understand movement types yet, but that's fine. The point being, SAP automatically recognizes that it's not an inbound receipt, but it's a return. And how does it recognize it? Because we have marked that item in the PO as a returns PO. So, item okay, and we are returning a quantity of 100. We could return 100, we could return 75, we could return however many you have. And save. And where are we returning them from? 0001, because that's where we have kept our newspapers and save. Cool. Now we're gonna enter the invoice. Put today's date and put the PO number in there. Enter an amount of 100. And instead of an invoice, select credit memo because it's a credit that we are giving, right? And the balance will tell you if you need to give a credit or a regular invoice. 
If you try to create a regular invoice, like so, you see the balance becomes 200, negative. And if you go to the messages, it will show you that the invoice document will be negative. Right? So that's not what we want to do. We want to create a credit memo because it's a credit that we are going to get when we, want, when we return a hundred quantity of these newspapers because it's a return item. It's not a regular inbound item. So we are good to go and save it. Right? Now let's go back to that uh, purchase order. And go to the purchase order history and see what happened. So we sent out the goods of quantity 100 and that's why we have a 100 minus and we have created a credit memo for a quantity of 100. So what we have done essentially is created a PO, mark that item as return item. This is the key to make it a return PO. And then did a goods issue. So you don't have to select anything in the drop down. Just go to my go, put that PO number in there. And the system will automatically determine if it should be a return or an inbound. And step number three is create an invoice receipt for a credit memo. So this is return PO. Now, in the next chapter, we are going to talk about credits and debits.